Hello and welcome to another episode of Literary Gladiators, the show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. It's written work, it's game. Let's meet the panel today. Jim. Brianna. Charlie. And Josh. Hi. What are we going over today? Today we'll be discussing the works of Ralph Waldo Emerson. Hmm. <laughs> uh, Brianna's literary crush. <laughs> The heavens smiled upon me the day I found Emerson. <laughs> Aww. A friend of mine's related to Emerson. Or maybe he found me. Shout out to JB. Ugh! Honestly, give me the pack of Velveeta. <laughs> oh. First question. Does that mean it's cheesy? Yes. I love cheese. <laughs> Velveeta's not actually cheese. <laughs> okay. Okay, panel, what is Emerson's significance to American transcendentalism? What is what is his significance, right? Um, <laughs> well, had a big impact on Brianna. Can you repeat the question again? Sorry, I got lost in the thought of Emerson. He's going to do for his I'm sorry, he's quite a dream guy. How is he significant? He um, took the movement from Immanuel Kant, the German Romantic philosopher, of the transcendental ideal, where there they believe there's this other class of ideas that comes from the human mind and intuition rather than um, experiences from the past. So you break tradition and you write your own story. As cliche as that sounds, that's, that's what it is. And you need to be a truly self-reliant person. And he just brought all of that from Europe to this great country. Emerson did a fine job uh, creating something uh, out of that. He himself was so uh, out there and uh, unique that uh, his work, uh, it can be deemed as challenging, but... He, he writes in Proverbs, time. so mm. it's, you really need to sit down, and if you're going to read Emerson, that's all you can be doing. You have to sit in a cubby or in the woods, and you need to, you just need to read them. You can't be thinking about something else or talking to someone while reading. Emerson, you just won't get it. Hmm. Okay. That makes sense. Any other points? Ready, next question? No. How does this connect to his importance in American literature? Transcendentalism is seen in every period of literature. No, even if you look back to Anne Bradstreet, her poetry, um, The Ninth Muse, I think it is, she talks about human nature. Yes, but the Puritans... As a, as a demigod, though. All right. I would say transcendentalism <laughs> is probably the oh, first, okay. uh, it's the first generation of uh, breaking apart as the American mind, per se. I don't know if I would call it the American, the American Renaissance com, uh, comprises of the literature uh, succeeding that, but as opposed to being driven on fiction, this is driven on essays. This is driven on spirituality. Spirituality. Is um, nature. Nature is a big influence. Well, a divine intervention, if you yes. will. Mm -hmm. As a footnote to my earlier mistake, I'm going to borrow from E. e. Cummings. Let me be wrong. <laughs> you know? Hey, at least you can admit it. It takes a real woman to do that. Yeah, well, men are right. They are not young. That's E. e. Cummings. <laughs> um, back to the question. Anyway, back to the point. Back to the point. Point. Um, as far as transcendentalism being like a driving force for American lit. It was not the first uniquely American no. philosophy because it was very right. much imported from Europe. Mm -hmm. I would contend that the philosophy was the first to be homegrown, but even that had Let's Asian and right. Yeah, romanticism as well. Yeah, like, but, words work. Uh, but, romanticism is England. It's not American. It's, it's, that's, I mean, romanticism is uh, yes. inspired transcendentalism. Right. right, well, America was still... I would say in its infancy as being an independent country and America mm -hmm. wanted to be so different from the rest of the world that, I mean, and to say that we were late in um, conforming to the romantic philosophy. They wanted to be so completely different from Europe that they're like, I, I mean, and let's, let's think about these nonconformists. Romanticism? Uh, no, we're transcendentalists. We can't be... Um, 
definitively defined. The one we, thing that they did take, though, is that... Uh, they, no, they, I'm not saying they didn't uh, take it. They took a lot. But the they, closest to nature, especially. Right. Yeah. Um, the appreciation of nature. Um, the faith and intuition, that's That's huge. the big. That's the biggest thing, though, that sets um, the transcendentalists apart from the romantics of Europe, is the close relationship that um, they have with Eastern philosophy. Right? Yes, I'll agree with that. Next question. What is your favorite work from Emerson? Oh, boy. Let's try and narrow it down here, Vanna. Mine is nature. Nature. My, I'm actually going uh, astray. I'm going to say Concord Hymn. Poem. His poem, Brahma. Mm -hmm. That's the reason that uh, I selected uh, Concord Hymn is uh, it was a dedication to, uh, it was a monument dedication, uh, the, uh, the start of the, the American Revolution, which in turn uh, was the uh, turning point to America making its statement, its statement of breaking away from the status quo of Britain and, and making it new. The last uh, it does repound. That's, yeah. that's <laughs> modern, that's the last line of the first century. stanza is uh, fired the shot heard around the world, which we hear so much in this mm -hmm. day and age that it defines the fact that uh, uh, the uh, it defines how we have uh, we made our mark, and that uh, it, while it took us years to become a worldly power, we were becoming a different nation at that uh, at that point in time, and that we were not turning back from uh, our destination. Jim, what's your reason for Brahma being your favorite? It's his um, first, well, not first, but one of the major acknowledgments of his debt to Eastern philosophy. Hmm. That does make uh, for a hefty reason. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm quite familiar with uh, nature. Uh, what makes nature your favorite poem? Um, I think what makes nature, it's not a poem. Your essay. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite work by Emerson is because it encompasses um, all of his works within it. There's self-reliance. There's um, gratitude to Eastern philosophy. There's, um, uh... And it goes into the woods? No, no, I'm getting there. There <laughs> is, um, homage paid to, um, setting your own path, you know, break from tradition. <laughs> Talking about the sepultures of your parents or something, you know? Sepulchers. Whatever, yeah. yes. Like, sepulchers um, so it's like... You know, this is a you know to all right. I can you, you know I can I'm run with at? this. The image of the sepulcher is it's like if it's the headstone of ancestry, then it's like the past is exactly. dead. I'm gonna forge exactly, on. Exactly, exactly. And um, nature is. I would like to think the the manuscript of transcendentalism. I mean, he has uh, an essay called the Transcendentalist, which doesn't really um, give way to what transcendentalism is. However. Nature is where we have the transparent eyeball. Yes. That's quite the, um, He says, um, in nature, all mean egotism vanishes. I become a, a part and particle no, of... No, I, I, yes. I become a transparent eyeball. I am a part or particle of God. And now we're out for now, man, And, <laughs> right, and in <laughs> nature is where you really see the duality of nature. So man and nature and nature and man. Mm. Aligning with the natural world. And Charlie, you like that same poem as well. Uh, what's your reason for liking nature? Um, <clears throat> two things. Back then, as opposed to today, today we have a lot of technology, we have a lot of we have, we have Facebook, we have uh, YouTube. <clears throat> All of the, we, I think the world is getting smaller. Today we're all confined to texting, and you know we're all we're together, but we're you know. But <laughs> no, but in the same sense, Emerson says in nature, go 
I get, I get confused all the time. You cast off society like a snake sheds his skin. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's and inspired he, Thoreau exactly. to go out onto his account. So we, so we kind of know what I'm talking right. about. Right. Thoreau you know. is um, a protege of Emerson. Yeah. Also, there is an image of reincarnation and the idea of the shedding snake. Exactly. Yeah. So it's the idea of being spiritually reborn once yeah. you part ways with the world that has put your spirituality in a box. You put the material behind, but the material, the cookies, the drums, the yes. Uh, mm. Put all that stuff go. behind you. It's got to be a little hard for me to part with this thing. God bless <laughs> you if, I, if you can get me away from this. But once you get past that, you will be. Don't you dare, Mister. <laughs> Attachment. See, this is what it is. This is what's going to keep you from enlightenment, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you abandon everything else and and return to yourself, your true nature. Mm. He doesn't say on 42nd and Park this happens. He says in the woods right. this happens. Uh, yeah. yeah. Quite a natural way to next to the tree, shaped like a cookie. <laughs> 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 Are there any final thoughts about, uh... Although uh, they do like cookie-shaped... Tr uh, no, tree-shaped cookies, not cookie-shaped <laughs> trees. <laughs> any final thoughts about Emerson at large? I don't know. Brianna's just having a daydream. <laughs> so, no, she's just fantasizing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I could picture you two together. In other yeah. words, in, in, um... In Brianna would be like smiling, this. Emerson... <laughs> and if you're and I would, I'd be serving you spaghetti. If you don't know what <laughs> swooning looked like before now, yeah. you do. If you're interested in checking out any of Emerson's work, uh, you could probably Should find I it at this? any other outlet that produces uh, yeah. American literature before 1900. And you should be able to get your hands on it. Go on Amazon tonight, type it in, and if you feel like it, we dare you. <laughs> Join us back next time for another episode of Literary Gladiators. If you have not yet, please subscribe and you will get weekly videos. And we're on Facebook too, so like us. Go join our group and you'll get all of the updates. Or until, don't. until next time, keep reading. Bye.